imagine knowing that they could now actually take up legally arms in their own defense. Mm. Revolutionary. Revolutionary. That has to be the most important thing about the Emancipation Proclamation. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. A white man could be legally killed by a black man. A slaveholder could be legally killed by his former slave. That's heavy. That's everything. Nearly 200,000 African Americans enlisted in the military during the war, including my great granduncle. They fought for themselves. They fought for each other, and they fought for those who had been left behind. But most of all, they fought for a future with hope, a future of freedom and equal rights. Their stories are honored here at the African American Civil War Memorial and Museum in Washington, D.C. Harry, given the fact that the military today is so black, my students find it extraordinarily difficult to believe that black men had to fight for the right to fight, as it were. Why? It's like the 1940s and 50s and the arguments that African Americans, the Negro, cannot play basketball because <laughs> it requires too much of the intellect. <laughs> well, that's the argument during the Civil War. They're just not intelligent enough. They don't have the agility, the courage, the determination to be a good soldier. While the Emancipation Proclamation gave African-American men the right to fight, it did nothing to guarantee their equal treatment. Northern white soldiers were skeptical of black soldiers. Southern soldiers simply reviled them. Confederate President Jefferson Davis made it clear, all black Union soldiers would be treated as slaves in rebellion. Jeff Davis would come out with a proclamation stating that if a colored soldier is captured, he will be returned to his owner. If the owner could not be found, the state would take the responsibility and they would be put to hard labor. But the Confederate soldiers would behave not according to protocol in many cases. Perhaps the Confederate Army's worst atrocities against African-American troops came at the Battle of Fort Pillow, Tennessee in 1864. As defeat loomed, African-American soldiers attempted to surrender. Confederate troops massacred them. 255 African-American soldiers were given no quarters. No quarters means that when you're captured as a prisoner of war, they do not take you through the regular protocol. What you're saying is they wouldn't allow black soldiers to surrender. They just killed them. You do not allow them the honor of being a soldier. 255 black soldiers were killed in cold blood. It was the Confederacy's brutal reminder to African Americans of the price they would pay for rising up against slavery. Only six months later, black soldiers would have their revenge. It was September 29th, 1864. Union troops assembled in New Market Heights, a small town right outside of Richmond, the capital of the Confederacy. They were led by Benjamin Butler, the same Benjamin Butler who early in the war had refused to return fugitive slaves to the South. At New Market Heights, he commanded black troops to lead the assault. Before the assault, he rides around through the troops and tells them, you go in crying, remember Fort Pillow. They're up against veteran Texas troops, and to take New Market Heights, capture the closest position to Richmond. You want to send troops who have the determination that won't back down. not to stop to fire. And your comrades are falling consistently as they're moving forward. In the fourth and sixth United States coaches, they get almost wiped out. 
So it's the next wave. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy for the next wave either. They don't stop. They just keep coming. Confederates are hearing this, remember Fort Pillow, and they withdraw from the position. I've read some scholars who, who would say, well, they just they, they just uh, decided they defend another position. <laughs> That's always interesting to me. Yeah, the position's called cover my ass. <laughs> That's why the performance of United States color troops in these battles is so important, because they don't stop. They don't just say, we captured Newmark Heights and we're partying, the game's over. They continue. It's only a matter of time before Richmond falls. So that's it, the cake's all dough, as my dad would say. the end of nearly three and a half centuries of American slavery. The human cost was unprecedented. Nearly 750,000 lives lost. 40,000 of them African Americans. More deaths than in all other American wars combined. As the country entered the period known as Reconstruction, the massive federal effort to rebuild a new South, the future of the former slaves was anything but clear. Their chains had been struck, but would they realize their hope for new lives as free and equal citizens? Thanks so much for watching.